About two weeks ago, I set up the Paladarum you can see behind me for my archer fish. It was an epic build. It went absolutely perfectly and it looks great. So I initially had the tank set up as an Indian aquarium, basically Indian fish and also added some tiger barbs. So I had to take those all out and drain the tank, clean everything out of it. When you do something like this with a four foot tank, it's not a quick job. It looks quick on film, but it really wasn't. I then set up a temporary tank to put the fish in using the substrate from the other tank that we just cleared out. I also put all the plants in there to make sure that they survived so we can reuse them again in the new setup. All the fish went in absolutely fine. They stayed in there throughout the whole build. I then needed to build a retaining wall in the back section of the tank. This would hold all the media. I'm talking gravel, aqua soil, and it basically creates a zone for beneficial bacteria to thrive and also raises up a level so we can put hardscape and plants on it later on. Here I am just putting all the wood in. I wanted it coming right out of the water so that it really impactful. Foreground was just some plain old sand. Only about an inch of it all over. And then on top of it, I placed loads of detail stones. I had some small rounded ones just for all the corners and to cover up any cracks. And then in the foreground, we had Rio Shingu, which is a flat sort of river style, and it looks so realistic. And then we went on to the planting. This is Bulbitus, there's some Anubias dotted around, some Java ferns, basically filling in some of the cracks, but not too much because I didn't want to take away from the whole hardscape. Then I could place in all the crypts that we saved from the previous setup. I placed these closer to the rocks in deeper areas that had lots of gravel, and then we could just fill the whole thing up. On top of the retaining wall sections, I added house plants and garden plants. We had peace lilies at the back and then just some ferns in the foreground. And for filtration, I'm using a Wazi Biomaster 350 Fermo. It's got a heater built into it, which is perfect, and a pre filter for cleaning. And it just has really good flow as well on that side. I had to modify the outlets to make sure that they went down to the water level, but we got it to work and it, it actually turned out really good. Back in go the original fish, apart from some of the drake fin barbs that I had originally. They're a little bit too small for this setup, considering the bigger fish you're putting in. And I squeezed a load of sponges into the water as well. And this seeded the tank immediately. Now it's time to pick up the fish. We're at the store here, Matt's helping me pick out the archer fish, you can see them at the back looking gorgeous. They're a really, really good size. We packed them up and I took them back to the studio. Time for temperature acclimation, so I set them in there with the light off for a good 20 minutes or so. And then after that, ready to release. Pop the bags and put them in. I fully trust the water from my shop, so no qualms about just putting them straight in, no stress on them. And they settled in absolutely brilliantly straight away. Within the first day, they were showing signs of aggression and hunting, like this jumping out of the water. So, so good to see, and it got me really excited for things to come. Okay, right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna get these archer fish to spit. But first of all, the whole studio is a bit of a state at the moment. There's just like stuff everywhere. Uh, when you're creating, I, well, when I'm creating, I've just finished building this this uh, tank here for some of the guppies, where are they? Oh, there you go. It's uh, Snow White guppies. So I finished the build video for this, and when I'm creating, I just, I just dump everything everywhere and worry about it afterwards. So I need to sort this out. So I've moved the new guppy tank, the Snow White guppies, over to the sink area. There's nothing really over here and it's, it looks really, really nice. Although it is very, very bright at the moment. Definitely going to get algae in this situation. You know, this is a newly established 
low tech tank. That amount of light is just a disaster waiting to happen. But on this Chihiros C2, it doesn't, it's not programmable or anything like this. It's one of their first sort of models. So in order to dim it, I can either put tape over some of the electrical tape, like black stuff, over some of the LEDs, or I can put some floating plants in. And I'll always really opt for floating plants if I can, because not only will they actually sort of diffuse the light, they'll actually improve the water parameters as well. So like they'll use nitrates and things like that. They'll keep, keep really good water. And that's all I'm doing really is keeping good water and then the fish, it all looks after itself if you sort out the water. So we've gone for some salvinia there and red root floaters. Not a huge amount to start with, but that's gonna, you know, they'll multiply within a week. So many of them. You might have noticed next to that tank here, this bowl. So we've got just some uh, salvinia at the moment, it looks like, but no, there's actually, you come down here, look, there's some incredibly bright red cherries and they're really, really good stock. Now I saw Matt's video recently when he did a bowl and it made me think, oh, I love doing bowls. I wanna do a bowl again. So that's what I'm gonna do and do a red cherry bowl, but they're like, proper like bloody mary reds so so bright i just remembered i could lift the light up as well so i've raised the light now and i've added the float plants and we should have just about the right brightness i think anyway as soon as i start seeing the females are pregnant i'm going to take the male out and as soon as i see babies i'll take both the females out as well where's the other one? Oh, there it is at the top <laughs> okay that's the room sorted now i've actually been trying to do this pretty much every day for the past two weeks and i'm at the point now where i'm getting somewhere with it the fish fully trust me, they know I'm the feeder, but more importantly, they know what's their food. So for the first week or so, the main thing that I wanted to do was get the archer fish completely comfortable with me and knowing that I was the feeder, I'm not a threat, I'm someone to get excited by. And that is now actually happening. I can be this close to the tank, and the fish aren't freaking out. They keep looking over at me, they're interested in me. They're not scared at all. The only time they get proper scared is if I start putting my hands like right into the tank and cleaning, you know, thrashing around a little bit. But other than that, they seem really, really comfortable with me, which is great. You see what I mean? I'm right here, look. I am zooming a little, but I am right up close. They're looking at me. What's he doing? What's it? He's the man with the food. Bring us food. <laughs> so what I've done is I've tried, oh, they're, they're, they are there just hiding so what I've done is try to find the brightest food that I could look and I managed to find this stuff like I want them to associate that color with food so that when we can actually get them to spit out of the tank then but initially I'm just feeding into the tank in that back section just by throwing it to the surface so they associate it with kind of like flies landing so yeah just like this they, they are starting to recognize that when I tap it means food is on its way they're alert they're not right out in the foreground but so I do that there we go, jumping straight up. Did you see that? Let me come a little bit more central and down to where their level is. Zoom in a bit, right, watch them. Look, see, they're looking at the surface. The other fish will swarm around, I think, signals to them as well. So I'll do that again, chuck it in that area. There we go, and they're coming up. Whoa, whoa, I've never seen them do that before. Crazy. So I carried on feeding them like this. I think total of about three more days. And then I thought it's time to start trying something new and pushing the boundaries seeing what we could get the fish to do. One morning, I walked into the studio, straight past the tank and sat right down at my computer desk, firing it up, getting it ready to work for the day. I've been sat there about 10 minutes or so, and all of a sudden, I felt water drop on me. Okay, that was weird. I've just sat here and I felt the joys of having a shaven or bald head. You can feel water quite easy. I felt water just hit the back of my head. I'm looking around, thinking that this, like one of the tanks or the filters is spouting at me and then it clicked. One of the archer fish has just spat at me. I turned around, had a look, and they went back, but yeah, definitely spat on me. Not only did it hit the back of my head, it hit my computer screen as well. <laughs> so this has got me massively excited, and let me tell you why. It's because I didn't know that they could spit. Like, you hear that they can spit. I've not experienced it at all. I've never seen it. Maybe just the ones in the wild do it. Maybe just some, some people have got, have got ones that spit, and I haven't. I've got non-spitters, but this means that I've got spitters. This sounds so weird. I, <laughs> my fish can spit at me, yay. But it is exciting because that's the main thing that drew me to them, like, how cool would that be? So I've, not, I've still not seen it, but I know they can do it. I mean, unless I'm completely wrong, of course, and there actually was a leaky filter or something, I don't know. So they now know me, they're not shy, they know what their food is. I think it's time to try another tactic to try and get them to spit. What if I take some of the colorful food stick it to the side of the glass. I'm, I mean, I'm absolutely sure that they're gonna be able to see it. And hopefully that'll get them to try and spit it down because they can see it, but they can't get it. That's gonna give their instincts the kick up the 
that, that it needs. <laughs> right, so I'm coming over. They know I'm here. They are aware I'm here. By the way, it's the following day, so they haven't been fed today. I'm hoping that they're gonna be really sort of wanting to, oh, look, look, coming forward. Not even scared of my hand anymore. I'm gonna put a drop of water in with that food just to make it kind of sticky. And then hopefully I can get it to stick up here to the, to the glass. Oh, not that bit, they can have that bit. Oh yes, there we go. Hopefully that's gonna work. So I'm now stood back, hoping that they're gonna come forwards. Le there is the food, look, it's stuck on there. Uh, they're, not, they're not paying any sort of attention to, oh, hang on. No, yes, what's going on? They're looking up, they're looking up. That's what we want, we wanna see them looking up. I'm not sure that they can see it though. Ah, oh, come on guys. You oh, oh, one's coming forwards. What, ah, oh, did he not see it? This one sees it, this one sees it. This one sees it. What's he gonna do? Oh, he definitely saw that, didn't he? Or she, I'm, say I'm saying he, but I don't, you, you can't actually sex these fish, but, oh, this one sees it. What did he do? He did something then, he, like sort of flashed at it. Oh, this is gonna be so cool. Please do it. What's going on? What's going on? I don't really know what to say because I don't know what's going on. <laughs> they definitely see it though. Look, he's looking straight at it. If he can spit at it, that would be insane. Maybe I've done it too high. No, surely that's not too high. They can, they can easily get that, can't they? I'm zoomed right in and I'm far back in the studio. He sees it now. He's, they're both seeing it. Oh my, oh, he, oh my goodness. I'm trying to... They spit, they did. <laughs> oh, well done, guys. They're still a bit there. Oh, they got it. Yes, it's happening. They're, they're just doing it, they're just doing it. They're... Oh, I'm lost for words, that is so cool. Oh, brilliant, really, really good job. But what about the other guys? Okay, I think I'm gonna have to, he's <laughs> just going at it. <laughs> this is so funny. I think what might be a good idea, oh yes, he got it. What might be a nice idea is just to set up multiple points across the tank, then they can all have a go, can't they? Oh, I definitely want to try that. I just sat the camera down and looked across. They're still going at it. I mean, they can still see even those tiny little bits that you can see on there, they still want that. Okay, that's a different fish now that's spitting, so it's not just one. I was worried it was just one sort of being dominant, but it seems like they're all going to be doing it. I'm going to set up loads of points. <laughs> this is so cool. Right, hopefully they, give me a chance to actually set this all up before they start going at it. I'm trying to do it so they're not like really, really stuck on the glass because I mean, a bug wouldn't be that stuck, would it? Right, so I've now got four points. We've got one there, there, that I thought I had four, that's three. Oh, has one fallen off? Oh no, no, it's just a really tiny piece. But yeah, so I'm gonna sit back now. They're coming forward, they see it again coming to examine what's going on. They can definitely see it straight away. It's almost like their eyes are now zoned in on that color of food, which was a, a really good choice, I think. I'm not sure they would see like a, a plain flake stuck to that glass, although, I mean, maybe I'm not giving their eyes enough credit. So the camera's set up on a tripod. I'm way back in the room. I'm zooming right in. We've got our pieces are set. There's one right there, look. One there, tiny one there and then a fourth piece there, and they already see it. Look at this, coming forwards. Hopefully they're still hungry. I mean, I have obviously have just done that little bit, but that was only tiny. Surely that's not gonna affect them. Okay, I'm being patient, coming back out. In fact, I'm gonna stop talking for a second because even my vibrations might be putting them off. He sees it, he sees it for sure. You see it both, oh, there we go, you see that little bit. The aim seems to be slightly to the left each time. I'm not sure what that is. He's like, oh no, I'll have a go on this one instead. No, nope. oh, there's another one, I'll try that one. He keeps missing. Maybe it's because it's on glass, it makes it harder for them to tell, you know, like, oh, that got a bit, that got a bit for sure. Oh, there we go. This guy here is really getting the hang of it. Look at that. Ready, bang, got it, got a little bit as well. It's working every time, this guy, he's just absolute, he's like a pro. This one's just the, like the main hunter, 
you can actually just take all the food off the glass for the others to get then. Maybe it's a skill they've got to work at and they'll just get better and better at it because he does seem to be improving each and every time. And I guess as well, it's, it's, it's on the glass. Maybe it, it struggles, they can struggle with their depth perception because of the glass, I don't know, but he is definitely getting better at it. Maybe you guys should have a go as well and stop relying on your buddy to do all the work. Yeah, that was straight on, that was a direct hit look and he got the food straight away. He's getting it every time. <laughs> that is so awesome. Oh, he got a massive bit on that off then. <laughs> Everyone else is having a go. What's interesting as well is all the other fish are sort of swarming around the archers. There's gonna be some kind of symbiotic relationship going on here where uh, they just wanna, they know when the, when the archer fish come forward, it means food is gonna be falling from the skies. Oh, he's so good. This guy's so good here. He's the absolute pro. And in fact, he's the one with the most dominant colors as well. So maybe that's telling, I don't really know. But every shot is just nailing it now. He's swimming backwards and forwards looking for more food, but he's basically cleared it all off. There's a tiny bit of residue there, that's it. That's the only bit left. The rest, oh yeah, tiny bit there as well, but the main bulks, he's cleared them out. Great job. Right, so here's a question. Did I train them or did they just do what they do best? Uh, I like to think that I had some, something to do with it by teaching them what was their food. I mean, maybe if I hadn't done that and just put it on there, they would have tried anyway. I don't know, but either way, it was entertaining. It's, uh, it's really fun to see them swarming back and forth, trying to find a way, trying to get it out. They're an absolutely fantastic fish and I'm so glad that I went for them. I hope you've enjoyed this whole journey and uh, I look forward to seeing you or you, you can see me, something like that on the next one. Uh, click subscribe and things like that, bye.